welcome to Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Joyous conversations about what the afterlife evidence and modern science combine to tell us is true about our one reality. You have nothing to fear. You are eternal and you are perfectly loved. Knowing the truth changes everything. Now, here's Roberta. Welcome to Seek Reality. I'm Roberta Grimes and I'm so happy you're with us today. Last night at dinner, amazingly, my own husband asked me how I can be so sure there really for certain is a life after death, if you can believe that. Well, I said, well, for one thing, there is so much completely consistent evidence of so many different kinds. And no, I did not just pour my glass of wine over his head, although I was tempted Instead, I took it as a good sign that he is starting to care about his wife's big interest after all these years. He's a lifelong Catholic, after all, and for the first 20 years of our marriage, his big worry was that I was for certain going to go to hell. So I took his new open-mindedness as a big step forward. And actually, it is a big step forward. In fact, more and more people all over the world are open-mindedly discovering a new curiosity about what happens after death. Just like my husband, who for most of his whole life, or at least the whole time I've known him, didn't even want to know what happens after death. He had it all figured out because he was a Catholic, right? And now as finally minds are starting to open up all over the world, Seek Reality Online is finally ready to help all of them, including amazingly even my husband, to finally begin to learn the truth about what happens after death. And some of the evidence that supports that truth goes back a very long way. Our guest this week is Riley Haggerty, who's with us for the seventh time. Riley is one of our repeated guests that I especially enjoy. For the past 30 years, he's been devoting himself to the indispensable work of researching and documenting the great physical mediums of historic spiritualism. And he's published a number of really good books, including The French Revelation about the independent voice medium Emily French. Portraits from Beyond about the Bangs sisters, the direct voice about the medium Elizabeth Blake, and Spectral Evidence Volumes 1 and 2, which are compilations of mind-blowing mediumistic events during the heyday of spiritualism. And this, this stuff goes way back, more than a century, believe it or not. And it, Riley has also sat with most of the current inter- internationally known physical mediums, and many of these people are not even sitting anymore for the public. His wife, Caroline, is a practicing clairvoyant medium in her own right. Now, Spectral Evidence Volume 3 is just out, and Riley is here in fine form to talk about that one. Riley, welcome. I'm so happy to have you back with us again. Thanks for having me again. Just a a little more of an introduction that Riley has been actually researching and writing for, as I say, more than 30 years. And Spectral Evidence 3 is actually his ninth book. It's similar to the first two books in this series, Spectral Evidence 1 and 2, and it continues to document evidence of really mind-blowing spiritual events which manifested through some of our greatest physical mediums. In this particular book, he's quite certain that the mediums are unknown, and they're certainly unknown, unknown to me. Even enthusiasts of this subject have never heard of most of them, such as Lancelot Bryce of New Zealand, I've never heard of him, the Moore Sisters of Scotland, the British medium William Eglinton, never heard of him either, and Marcia Swain of Buffalo, New York, Mrs. Cecil Cook of New York City, never heard of them either. So how do you (laughs) find all these people? Well, after 30 years of research, you just, they come to you. But you don't really mean that. They didn't like tap you on the shoulder spectrally and say, hey, make sure you look me up? When it comes to this kind of thing, there's no coincidences. Oh, yeah, the, whole, the whole thing ended up that way. I mean, the beginning of my research was the same kind of thing. It's all just been, I think I've been spiritually influenced from the get-go, the very start. And these, after you've researched for so long, you almost have to, you have to go through these hurdles, I think. The more you dig and the more you unearth, all these mediums that you never knew of just start to pop up. And I go 
deeper into my own library. I collected these books over decades, rare books. And uh, it's almost like listening to an album. You listen to it once, then you, then you listen to it again, like the Beatles' White Album. The more you listen to it, the more you find. So with these books, it's the same kind of thing. I go through my library. Every year I go through it again, and it's like 500 books. So you're, so you're saying that you have these books, and you just go through them again and again, and you keep finding more material. Yeah, because originally in 1986, my mission was to try to find the answers to life after death, because I had lost my fiance to leukemia. She was only 29, and it put a stop to my musical career. But so large was the experience of her visions right before she passed away at Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore that it turned my whole life around. So my first initial quest was to just try to find some kind of answer. Instead of just walking away and carrying grief and loss on my back like a backpack, a lot of people do. But I just said I'm not giving up until I find the answers to life after death. And it was so large that I gave up my musical career, which was, which was very successful. So the first phase is I found the answers I was looking for. After, oh, 10 years into the research, I was already convinced. I mean, the first body of research with my first book, Emily French, I was convinced just from that right at the get-go. So evidential was her her case and her mediumship and her selflessness and the phenomena itself, independent voice, her case, if I would put one case to prove life after death and spirit communication, it would be Emily French. I could pick dozens, but she's my hero as far as saving my mind from grief. And no, no one can dance around her case. She took no money. She was selfless. She was older. She was deaf. And she was investigated by one of the most famous attorneys in Buffalo who set out initially to catch her in fraud because what he had heard was so outlandish to him, spirits talking in their own voices. He, of course, thought she was a ventriloquist, but that's absurd. You know, she was 60-some years old and feeble. Anyways, the first phase, like I told you, was to find the answers to life after death. After all that, 10, 15 years in, the second 15 years of research was dedicated to documenting and archiving the records of our great mediums, because the world deserves these truths. They're buried in obscurity for a century and a half. So now my mission is to resurrect the, the wondrous things that have been done, proving conclusively a thousand times over and more, life after death. And so now, you know, it's unfortunate that so long ago, these great truths were buried by science, the church, prejudice, into the cemetery of obscurity. And if those truths could have been known, if they weren't buried, they could have changed the course of the world. Oh, amen to that, my dear. And you can easily, you can look out of the world right now. You can see right now that we are not progressing as a species. We just, I just don't get that feeling. But these great truths, which were good, that have put us forward as a species if people understood these great spiritual truths. So now I'm dedicated to uh, archiving and bringing, bringing to the light of day the great, great things these mediums did for the world. That's my... That's my statement now. I'm, I'm resurrecting their, their work. And it may take generations for my work to be discovered. But I, I can tell you this, Roberta. I've done global Zoom meetings, several. And people from all over the world have told me, especially people that are older, getting in their 80s and 90s, that the truths that they discovered in my books changed the course of their thinking and it liberated their minds once and for all before they left this world, that they finally found the spiritual truths they were looking for. And to hear that, even from one person 
who was in the in the twilight of their life say it saved their mind. They finally found the truth they are looking for before they leave this world. Even just one person saying that, my work is worthwhile. Now you understand why I do what I do, my dear. That's exactly how I feel. 80 to 90% of people don't know the truth about our eternal lives. No. And most people don't know, too, that what you are researching and preserving for people, which is precious work that you're doing now, um, that was the heyday of, of um, deep trance and physical mediumship. So what the work that you're doing is priceless work. But um, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, the, 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 that time? I was brought up in private Roman Catholic schools. And, of course, uh, my prejudice was deep against these people because of their, their, I don't know, their weaponry was fear. You know how the strict Catholic schools can be. It's just the you know, terrible experience. So I knew that that wouldn't supply anything. I had, I had a blank, blank sheet. And I, all I knew is that someone I knew and loved had disappeared. And like a puff of smoke that happens every day to thousands and thousands of people. But I just said, I'm, I'm stopping everything to the shock of many people in the music business. I said, I'm stopping everything. And uh, I'm not going to explain why I'm just going in search of something. And I just started reading uh, anything I could get my hands on. I went to rare bookstores and then I finally discovered uh, Emily French, my brother, actually found her. Yes, and she, I should just say that she's a famous, famous medium. Everyone should know that you you were, God led you to that book because whatever you found, because she was the real, real deal. No question whatsoever in my mind because I, during my search, uh, I could not find information about her. And suddenly, I have this book in front of me that my brother found at a yard sale in San Diego. It was Edward Randall's second book, The Dead Have Never Died. Uh-huh. That that changed the course of everything. I knew that there was mediums out there that had left, that had wondrous, wondrous gifts. You know, so I stayed with it and found, I mean, I had no computer. Even no, I had no computer, and I had uh, the old-fashioned way of traveling to bookstores, libraries, historical societies. I went to England, Australia, all traveling to find out what I could. And I finally realized that Edward Randall had a body of work, five published books about Emily French, long out of print, rare and hard to find. There's reprints now of two or three of them, but I found material that was never published before put it all together, and I was going to a, there's no question in my mind that Emily French was involved because I could not find a photograph of her. Yes. Even like five years into the, the search, I could not find a photograph, and something just led me to look through an old, musty pile of uh, genealogists I had, but I just picked one out. She was from Rochester. I called her up. I just picked one randomly from the list. Called her up, and she said hello. I told her my name, what I was doing. It turns out that at that very moment, she had been doing a genealogical search about Emily French. <laughs> and this led me not only to what she was doing. I almost dropped the phone when I heard her say it. Tell me that's you know a coincidence, whatever, one, whatever word you want to use. Of course it's not a coincidence. That's spirit influence, no question. Right. So she says, not only am I doing a search for Emily French, but here's the the names and the phone numbers of her great great grandsons who are still living. Oh wow! So within within ten minutes, I had on the phone both of her grandsons. They were crying. It was like a oh. it was quite a moment. Wow. So and one of them said, "Oh, I have all kinds of photographs." So I was like, oh. what do you know, Beautiful. Emily? Emily French did that. No question in my no mind question. she did that. I can only hear that word coincidence so many times yes, that it's like, all. it's getting boring. Getting boring saying the word coincidence. It doesn't work anymore. No.